Hello, this is Bill Bateman, and I'm back with the final video in the review of Mercury Athletic Valuation. And now we're at the point where we have to make, recommend the value. What is the value of this company? And remember, we are going for enterprise value. And enterprise value, if you have that, and you subtract out any interest-bearing debt, you can get to the equity value. But we're basically concerned in this case with enterprise value. And if you stop there in this case, and you stop there in your final case project, you'll be doing just fine. So we've calculated a few different values, and let's uh, take a look at those again. If you remember, we looked at the asset value, and we came up with $214,067. And remember, these are with zeros omitted, so that'd be closer to $214 million. And then when we looked at the market multiples, we came up with $387 million for the EBITDA multiple and $397 million for the EBITDA multiple. And then when we did the discounted cash flow, we came up with $308,000 uh, using a WAC of 11.06 and a long-term growth rate of 2.78. But if you look at another number here, and I'm going to circle this, at 4%, your discounted cash flow comes out to $349 million rounded off. So we've got five values here. What's the right value? Well, I've been telling you all along that this is not just a quantitative exercise. You also have to include qualitative uh, factors. So what are some of the qualitative factors? Well, if you remember back to our strategic analysis and introduction, the purchase by AIG of um, Mercury Athletic looks like a good strategic fit. And the decision to exit the women's casual uh, footwear line should result in better cash flows. They have a good demographic with the 18 to 25-year-old male involved in extreme sports and it may be that the long-term growth rate is underestimated. If you remember uh, Higgins always suggests that that should be the long-term uh, rate of inflation plus the long-term growth in the economy which usually settles out somewhere around four percent. And then we have to remember that our multiples are based on averages over three years and if you calculated averages, which I did, for just the most recent year, the multiples actually come out a little bit lower. So let's return to our, um, to our summary here. And I think the first thing we can do is look at the asset value as a floor. We're not going to go any, any lower than that, obviously. And really, that's quite low in comparison to our other numbers. The two market multiples seem to be a little bit on the high side, but as I said, the multiples that the author calculated were based on three-year averages. If we calculate them on just the prior year, they settled down a little bit and are just a little bit lower. The discounted cash flow that we calculated at $308 million, again, was based on 11.06 WAC, but this 2.79% growth rate is probably the one variable that we can take a closer look at. If we go with Higgins at 4%, we come up to 348, 349 million. So I think I'm going to take this all together. I like this number. I like this growth rate. It's within reach of these multiples when you take just the prior year. So I'm going to settle in on $350 million for the value for Mercury Athletic. Now you might say, why didn't I use 348957000 
Well, when you get to numbers this big, it's usually better to present them somewhat rounded off. I wouldn't expect to see anything less than a value stated in th millions and thousands. You certainly don't need to go down to the last three digits. Although I've seen some reports, which I kind of ch chuckle at, that actually have dollars and cents in them. You don't need to get that close. There's too many assumptions, too many things that have already gone on that we can round up or round down, whatever the case may be. So again, our final valuation for Mercury Athletic, based on a market value of invested capital, also known as enterprise value, is $350 million in this analyst opinion.